we're working on today is we're going to work on installing the new inverter. Uh, this boat actually has an inverter um, already, but it's outdated. So we're going to be uh, upgrading it with this Victron Multi Plus 3000 watt. So it's a pretty good size unit. Um, I don't think we'll even use a fraction of this, but we've got, we've got it there, you know, with the kids and everything. Um, so we'll be pulling the old one out and putting this new one in. Uh, funny story, this one is we were told about the boat, the inverter didn't work and when we got on the boat the batteries were being charged so i actually had to find the inverter uh, so we found it under the dinette under a false floor which is great because it's out of the way but on the flip side of that it is buried down in there so we're actually going to be removing that and then installing this on a little higher up um, give it a little better ventilation um, and then also make it easier just to access so the one thing I don't care for about this one is it's so buried down that if something happens when you're in the water, like everything always seems to do, uh, getting to it isn't isn't great. So, I mean, I already knocked the, the nuts loose on it actually, um, just to pop it off, but I'll show you as I go through more we're doing with that and then uh, how we're gonna set this guy up. So um, anyways, we got burger, big wire, um, crimps, everything, to just hopefully make this a quick project. So, see how it goes. So, here's the old one. As you can see, it was down in a false floor, and it's actually buried down next to the water tank. So, getting at it was uh, is quite a challenge. So, we're going to end up mounting. I'm going to make some brackets and mount it up from here down basically um, and then I'm gonna cut a hole in there so that the fan on the bottom can pull air from the cool hall right out of the bilge so let me start getting that guy out and So it looks like this thing's loose now. I think. And so yeah, this is one thing I want to point out. Again, to each their own. This is just why the way I feel. But so the way they they put this thing in here to keep it tucked away. Um, if you can see here, this is the big fan to cool. These inverters obviously create a lot of heat um, and it's just not good for them. Uh, so this fan was an inch or two, probably away from the wall. So it wasn't doing a whole lot, I wasn't running really as fast as I could. Um, so again, we're gonna move it up. There are place, someone might correct me, feel differently, you know, but that's just my thought. So if you're not familiar with the Victron inverters, uh, I figure I'll take a quick look at it. Some things that I, the reason I went with them, I really like, um, besides um, they've got great reviews and people seem to like them. Um, so one thing first, first hand is electronics, some electronics I've found will have a, a booklet of instructions um, saying which does what, but the, the actual device will just be pretty plain looking. Um, and not even from an aesthetics, just from an information standpoint. Um, so the thing with this that I like is it's labeled very well. So if after it's installed, then you throw away the instructions, like, I don't know if everyone else does, but like I do, I don't keep them. Uh, so you can look at this thing and really have just even not even knowing how this thing operates or how to install, you really can just looking at it, it kind of tells you. So I'll take a look real quick. So you can see here, um, you obviously have led lights that kind of come up and show you what's going on when the charger's running, when the inverter's running. And then it even gives you a little quick display here. Um, tells you all the, uh, basically 12 volt wattage, amperage, all that, you know, it's kind of just, it's got a lot of information just on the front cover. And then take the four screws out as intended. And you get inside here, I look a little scary at first glance, but you look in here and you've got battery positive and negative, um, which you can, you know, run two, we'll just be using one lug of each. And then you come in here and here's your AC circuits and you've got AC in, 
AC out one, AC out two, and then obviously I'm not gonna go through all of them, but you got your sensor hookups here. Um, so for me, um, it's, so for me, that's, that's like pretty basic. Like, I mean, you're, you're, if, if I already had to get into someone else's or not knowing how to do this, I mean, you can pull the cover and you have a good idea where the power's going in, where the power's coming out. I mean, these things wire up pretty, pretty simple. But anyways, just, just a comment I thought if someone's thinking about doing these and not sure which one to go to. Um, and then obviously they have a lot of options. We're gonna be running the servo um, as well. So we'll be able to kind of monitor everything, but I'll get into that later. Um, so here's our hole. So we're gonna stuff it and I'm actually gonna end up mounting it up above here. And then you can see the fan here. I like the little guard it's got here, but we got a fan here. And so we're gonna point that down in the hole and that'll give a little better ventilation. Um, so uh, we'll get started on mount. I'll get this mounted up and then I gotta pull some big wire. Uh, they actually ran some smaller wire. So I'm gonna run some big one cause we gotta run it all the way back to the engine room. All right. so. Went to put the new inverter in and hit it for a slow snag. This is the little power cord that the old inverter had. Again, I have installed this before. It looks like they mounted it and I mean, basically stretched it to the fuse. So, uh, so I had to go get more cable because um, that one was too short. So ran to the Marine store, got some very cheap Marine grade battery cable. Um, no, stuff's not cheap at all. So anyways, Cut it to the length I needed, and I'm just gonna put some ends on it, and we'll start getting that all right. So me personally, I like to leave a little excess. You don't wanna get crazy with battery cable, but leave a little excess, uh, just so you can actually work on the thing if you need to move it around and ever. So, but that's just my take on it. on there, a little heat shrink, and we'll be rocking and rolling. After that, end up with a little a lot longer cable and just get this thing put in. So as you can see here, when we went to put the inverter, when we set it up, it didn't line up just right with wanting to keep it below this seat cover. So just took some aluminum straps here and we're gonna hang it here and then threaded the holes down here. Um, and then this would be kind of nice because again, like I talked about earlier, these things build a lot of heat. Uh, so the last, there's actually a certain distance around the inverter you wanna keep it air gapped. And so this will just kind of be, if anything, pretty solid and then I'll also just give an air gap behind it as well because I want to make sure I keep it ventilated but yeah so it doesn't have to be anything. All right so last night I went to install my little makeshift bracket um, and then when I put it on I didn't have these screws mounted and it was actually flexing up and it gave me a rattle basically when it was I always put stuff on and tap it kind of shake it because anytime on a boat underway it's got shit's gonna rattle and stuff so um, Anyways, we got a rattle. When I did these brackets originally, I was trying to do some quick boat yard fab. And so we just called it a night last night. I went home and actually added this cross fab, remember? Uh, just welded it in real quick. And then since I was in the shop, it countersunk the screw holes, made it look a little nicer, but it's a little more robust now. Um, so this should fit in there a lot better. So um, yeah, get this thing tossed in and then we'll put this back in, hopefully without a rattle. That's it. That's all the screws we need for that one. And then, let me take our tape off. Oh, so we take the tape off. Yeah, the tape's just, can you grab that screw, please? Rose, don't grab that. Rose. Okay. Here, you want to give me those screws and I'll put it on the table? Uh -huh. 
Thanks, buddy. Yeah. All right, so now we gotta put the big box in. Big battery, okay. Let me see the nuts. Okay, this one. Here we go. There we go. Now, now, washer. Washer. Lock washer. Lock washer. Lock washer is the spring looking one. And then the nut. And when you put the yeah. nut on over, over the build, you want to be very careful about the drop because when you do, it's gone. You do me a favor, buddy. Can you hold? Can you push on this cable? Take your hand and push here. You just push on that. There you go, good job, dude. Okay, you let go. Thank you, bud. That was actually good help. All right, so we got the inverter mounted. We got the cover off now. So these are the hot leads coming in, and then this is where the AC comes in and out, where it passes through the inverter. So I'll start working on that next, but at least got the 12 volt side hooked up. So the way this thing works is we put everything inside the panel and then we close it up afterwards, the cover, but you can see it's about in there. So we're about halfway there. Now we got the inverter and the DC power hooked up from the batteries. Um, now I got to run the AC from the shore power, the 110 volt. It's going to come in, go to the box, the inverter, sorry. And then from the inverter to the power panel. So what we're going to use here is we're using six gauge uh, Marine three wire. So you can see some real thick stuff because I got to run it from here all the way under the floor and up to our panel here. So we want big stuff to make sure we're not giving ourselves any wire drop at all. Um, so I'm gonna start working on pulling that through and then I'll show you how we're gonna hook that up. All right, so we got the inverter all wired up. Uh, this is, we just plugged power into it. So we're gonna start turning systems on and see how it does. Power LED lights on for 110. One ten pass through. So let's go to the inverter. So turn the inverter on. That was a damn switch. Unfortunately, I can't see what light is on. <laughs> Just throw a light without the legend. So it's throwing a low battery. <laughs> Mains on, bulk charge. Okay, cool. So we got lights coming on. That's what that's saying is since the batteries are on the low side, and so it kicked itself on. So it went into pass through mode. So it saw the 110, so it automatically goes into pass through, which means when I send this to the panel, 110 volt comes. And we should be able to start sending stuff up like start hearing stuff yep there's a heat there's the 110 heater turning on outlets on so that will go over here off. This is the old inverter system, so it's doing nothing but being a voltmeter for me right now. This would be absorption. There it goes. Yeah, because those batteries are new. We've been on them for about two days, so we've been using them a little bit here and there just for lights and, and stereo and stuff. So it kicked on initially, went right to bulk charge, and then it went now it's sitting there in absorption. So that means it's just topping them off, and then when it floats, it will be just maintaining so looks like we're going so we got the inverter hooked up we tested it everything tested out good you can see here we got the LED lights on this bank showing that the charger is functioning meaning it's got 110 in and then we'll come over here you can see the TVs on now I'll shut them at the main off 
Phoebe doesn't even glitch. So that's no one ten to the low. And if you look over here at the inverter now, you can see it auto switched over to inverter on now. So it'll automatically pick up and now it's running off the, the battery bank. And you can see over here through our mess, got everything running. We got DCAN 110 being generated from there. So as soon as the power gets cut to the boat, it doesn't know any different and starts pulling from our bank. So looks like the inverter is working good. So we uh, next we're going to install our servo monitoring system so that'll be we'll kind of get into that in another video actually this one kind of went to extra innings i still got to build the bottom floor and kind of seal it in and like a whole bunch of wire tying because it's all ran now but it's really messy so if anyone watches this and thinks it's messy it's because it is and so um when we get to the servo one i'll do a finished walkthrough of after i p-clip all the wiring up and stuff like that but um yeah, it's done. So we're going to get wrapped up and get out of here. And next time we're out, um, I'll install that and kind of show you the monitoring system for this and some more kind of specific stuff. So thanks.